just thinking in this week, what if God would take away the word of God because we wouldn't read it to hold it up highly in every place? What if he would take it away from our schools and our public readings? What if God would take away the Bible? What if God would take away my message because I refused to share it to tell the truth? Start watering it down. What if God would take away our privilege to pray out in public and schools because we don't hold it here anymore? Why did God take away the Ten Commandments off the walls in our courthouses because we don't hold them up anymore? And what if we, what if God took away our spirit from our churches because we didn't, uh, we always wanted to quench it. We always wanted to grieve it. Why did God take away our church because we refused to attend, take part? Why did God take away our songs because we refused to sing anymore? And what if uh, God would take away our church family because we uh, failed to forgive them, encourage them, tell them we love them, pray for them? What if God would take away our talents because we refused to use them and share them? We, we try to hide them. And why, what if God took away our freedom because we refused to get out of bondage? And what if God took away our hope because we quit telling people Jesus saved us? But do you know God won't forsake us? He said, I'll never leave or forsake you. Deuteronomy. He'll never, his eyes is on the sparrow. The one thing that the Bible did, does say that we, we uh, first of all, we can neglect. We are the one. Mind me, the story of two old, a man, old a couple driving down the country road, a man and a woman. The woman said that we always used to sit side by side. We looked like a two headed person. And now you're on that side. And I'm on this door. The old man said, well, I'm not the one who moved. Amen. Where are we with God? Let's stay close. Let's worship. If you, can, if you will, all that can will stand just for reading of God's word today. 1 Samuel chapter 3. The book of 1 Samuel in chapter 3. I'm going to read the first four verses here. I like to hear the turning of the pages. A lot of people today got the tablets and got their phones. And, but there's something about the turning of the pages. I mean, that sounds good. 1 Samuel chapter 3 says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And there the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. But the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Miss Lisa, we pray for him. We pray for him.
Thank you for good prayer, Lisa. It says here in 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and that the word of God was precious in those days. There was no open vision. That was a dark time. That was dangerous time. And yet, yet this little Samuel began to come up and minister. You know, he was like a little white flower growing out of a dry place. He, uh, we could talk about our situation, how we are in America, and I could tell you the situation. I could go on and on, but what would happen? We would just be more depressed, more discouraged. But you know, I'm not here that. We are tempted to do that. But also, boy, we've got a great opportunity to spread the word. Uh, I thought about little Samuel coming at, up in these hard times when Eli, in that hard time in uh, Israel. You know, uh, uh, talk, I went by my brother Tim uh, when Tim was alive. And out there in the middle of that cow paddy, that cow pasture, there was a little daffodil growing up in a cow paddy. That's kind of what I see a Samuel. You know, flowers can grow in dry places. These little children, they're coming up. I mean, that's only the work of the Lord doing that. Just an encouragement in these tar uh, hard times and, and bad times and dark times, you know. Uh, you know, we see the continuous growth of a character from this sa uh, Samuel, from a child all the way up to an old man in verse 8. Uh, you know, we see the, a flower growing up in desert places. The time was bad. It's a bad time for these people. It's a bad time for the church. You know, they it, dark and stormy time they are. Fears within, within, they are fighting without. The word of the Lord came with precious. You know what that means, precious? That meant rare. They watered it down. They wouldn't preach the word. They wouldn't. It was rare. It was very uncommon to hear the word of the Lord. I mean, it is precious. It's precious more than and more than silver, more than gold. It also get more and more precious. More and more rap. You don't hear it anymore. People just won't preach it. They uh, got other agendas on their mind and uh, want to do everything. No praying, no power, no uh, preparation. They were just sleeping. We talk about the Lord's call of Samuel, but there was also a loss of vision. You know, uh, we talk about the heaven seems far away and people of faith, you know, uh, we only see that. Uh, uh, see like heaven far away and people are losing faith and the word of God is very rare. There was no open vision. We came into 2000, uh, 2020, boy, we had a good vision. The next week we were going to have revival. We had another revival scheduled for October into November. I don't know, if, I don't think it's going to happen this year, but we had a vision. But it seemed like the church now, we, we lost our vision, their lack of vision, their loss of uh a vision here and they say they had no vision I wonder what the church even in these dark days we can't lose our vision about giving out the, the message to getting these little kids involved and getting them loving God and, and saving souls and telling them that Jesus saves you need to still tell them Jesus loves them and everything you do for the Lord is going to be worth it all one day the light was going out in the house of the Lord in Leviticus 24, it was uh, Eli's job to keep that light burning from the, when the sun went down to the morning. But guess what he did? I mean, there was a loss of vision there, and there was a laying down. And when it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. I'll tell you what, if they know uh, uh, commitment, in the heart, there will be no confession of the mouth. There will be no concern about your work. There will be no conviction to the world. There will be no conversion to all. There ain't no conviction. I mean, people are just laying down. It's not the time to lay down. We still need to get out the word of God, and we need still to keep working. Uh, we need to keep our vision. It, it may have changed a little bit. I tell you, the useless thing the most useless thing, thing I have is that 2002, 2020 cal character, the cal the calendar over there. I just, I don't even know where it is. I just threw it away. I had everything mapped out. I had singings. I had revivals. I wanted people to come. I just tossed it away. I said, Lord, this belongs to you, but you know, we're going to keep 
Our vision is still the same. We're going to spread the message. We're going to do what we can. It might be in a different way, but, you know, the precious the word uh, is rare. Uh, the, the world needs to hear it. Uh, the, we hear the Lord's call. He said uh, he began to call Samuel, and but there was a laying down in the church. The church is beginning to lay down now. We, we begin, a lot of people begin to get lazy. We are not praying like we should. We are not reading. This is the opportunity to at least send cards to be calling, to be praying. I can tell you not praying like you should because they lack a power. A lot of people say, I wish I had a better preacher. Well, I tell you what, the more you pray for me, maybe I'll get a bit better. You need to pray for your pastors. Uh, tell them, encourage them. Uh, you need to uh, come with joy in your heart. The light was, uh, the Lord keep calling the light going out in the house of the Lord. You know, uh, it said here that uh, they had a, uh, Jesus had a purpose, a plan, a passion. Uh, it was his job to keep the light burning from the, from the, from the go down the sun to the rising of the morning. The Lord uh, kept calling those. The light was going out in verse 3. And there the lamp of God went out in the temple. I mean, we can't let the lights go out in the temple. We can't let the power of God, we can't let the mission, we can't let the, the message that we need to bring to a dark, dark world uh, go out. Up above our way, not far from us, there is a place called Manville Caverns. Everybody go camping up the Manville Cavern? You know how dark that place is? I mean, that is so dark you can feel it. They put, tell you, put the light over your uh, hand up over your head, uh, hand, face, and you can't see it. The only light you may see is one of these little watch, maybe, if you got a watch. It's so dark you can feel it. Every, every uh, person that goes in a cave know that that's the darkest place they are. <coughs> Above ground, the light comes from somewhere in the deep cave. There's no light of all. That's complete and total darkness. You, all you can see is darkness. And uh, darkness in the cave is the most complete darkness known on earth. It's pitch black. The spiritual uh, darkness is like that. Our spiritual darkness darkness is like that. The Bible says that before that we were saved, we were dead in trespasses. And we were spiritually dead. You know, there's no spiritual life. A life without, a, a person without Christ is walking in spiritual darkness. You know, uh, we all do that. I appreciate Caden playing that song. You know what it says? He said, uh, Amazing Grace says, uh, I was, once I was blind, but now I see. Amen. We're walking in spiritual darkness. Uh, once we are in Christ, our eyes are open and we begin to walk in the light. And, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 just uh, says here, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but in manifestation of the truth, condemning ourselves to every man conscious in the sight of God. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that lost. If we begin to cut off the light, we let the light grow dim, the people going to suffer is our community and those that lost. we got a message to come out, but our gospel will be hid and hid to those that lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which uh, believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who the image of God shall shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves and your servant for uh, Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the lights of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's the light I'm talking about. We can't let that light burn out in, the, in our lives or in our churches. You know, here that the dark time, the light was going out. But the Lord is still calling. I pre appreciate that. Uh, the loss of vision, the laying down of God's people, the light's going out, but uh, the Lord's calling. In verse 4, and the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. We see that he ran unto Eli and said, Here I am, for thou, uh, thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again, and he went and lay down. You know, the a lack of uh, teaching. The Lord calls in many different ways. We 
We taught in Sunday school class. We see the Lord in creation. We see it in the scriptures. We see it through the Holy Ghost talking to us. I mean, but they are voice of reason, a voice of convenience, a voice of uh, conviction. And the Lord's still speaking. He speaks here four times. And, and uh, even, little Samuel said, here I am. And the, uh, the Lord calls again. One thing about Eli, he liked teaching his children and Samuel about the call of God. We should teach our children that when God calls, it should come automatically. We should tell them, we should get it in their hearts that when they have that conviction, they have that, the Lord speaking to them, they, they'll know the scriptures and they can come and get saved. They need to get it in their head that when the Lord begin to tug at their little hearts and tell them, you need salvation, they need to know what to do. They need to know, hey, that's the Lord calling me. I feel that burden. I feel that uh, that I have sinned. I feel that the only way that Jesus died for my sin, and I want to go to heaven if Jesus loves me. We need to do that. But it seemed like Eli lacked the teaching of his children. And our labor for the Lord is always confused with what we want. When we labor for the Lord, mostly in the churches, we always do it the way we want. We spend the money the way we want. We do the things we want. We set up the services the way we want. We need to do it the way God wants and God calls. And if you are, uh, want my advice, you come ask my advice. No use to come back until you do what you know, I advise you because that's the way with God. God tells you to take this step and you don't do it. You need to go back to that first step and then ask him again. You need to be obedient. You know, continue uh, in, uh, if you continue in your old way, you know, you can't blame God. What we want, you know, we all miss the blessings of God. That we want to do uh, God's work, but in our way, our will. You can't forsake God's house, you know, in attendance and maintenance and, and what we need to do. The Lord called for salvation. It seemed like here the Lord called in verse 6, and the Lord called yet again. And uh, Samuel, and Samuel rose up unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the Lord the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. God calls first in what way? He always calls in salvation. The first and second call to Samuel was that of salvation. And the first call God ever going to do for you is call for salvation. He's going to say, I love you, come, you need to get saved. And then the second call is for service and sanctification. And it said here, and the Lord uh, called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I. For thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. You know, Eli never told Samuel how to listen to the Lord. And never taught him about the things of the Lord. And Eli, we know about Eli. He was, uh, he, his own sons uh, didn't obey the Lord. But sadly yet, a different story in chapter 8. Samuel was so busy, he didn't teach his children. And his children didn't obey the Lord. That's why they wanted the king Saul. And, but, uh, you know, we need to uh, to to uh, uh, obey the Lord, but you know, God wants, don't want us to neglect uh, our home. Uh, Hebrews two three said, "How if we neglect so great a salvation? How can we escape this world?" You need to train your young ones. You need to pass it on. You need to do it with great joy. I tell you why a lot of people don't come to church. They said. Well, I don't want to go there. If people look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. And they kind of uh, all puckered up. Don't have no joy. And when you sing, sing with your heart. Tell those kids you love them. Love them and tell them also that Jesus loves them. I mean, don't go down the wrong way. When, Je when God says, thou shalt not, he's saying, don't hurt yourself. I want this for you. I want something better for you. you know, through Samuel Wilderness to, uh, to go on, he says here, Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, thou uh, shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. 
So Samuel went and lay down, lie down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as the other time, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for their servant hears. You know what? I know the light's going out a lot of time. Uh, we see the Lord calling our labor a lot of time confused with what God wants. The Lord calling for salvation. The Lord calls for service. But do you know what? The Lord keeps calling, don't he? He called four times. Uh, seeing the billboard, it says, the Lord's coming. Look busy. You know, we should at least look busy in the churches, in our homes. And, uh, you know, have you listened to God? Have you obeyed it? Have you trusted it? You know, that is a big thing in the world today. Uh, William Booth said the danger, the chief danger that uh, confronts the generation, our generation, would be religion without the Holy Spirit. Do we have religion without the Holy Spirit? Uh, we have Christianity without Christ. A lot of people saying Christ is not the only way. It's good works, work salvation, the membership. They are or a, a Christianity without Christ, uh, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, a politics without God, and heaven without hell. That's what a lot of people are uh, preaching about today. You know, uh, they are... Uh, some things uh, in this world, you know, they, uh, Samuel, one thing he did learn to do, he learned how to listen to God. I mean, the Lord's calling here. We uh, don't want the light to go out. We can't let the light go out in our churches anymore. I tell you what, uh, the church has, be, has have become so much, much like the world that you can't hardly tell. We were talking in Sunday school about a preacher standing up, uh, Having a polo shirt, uh, wearing uh, a shirt and flip flops. I mean, he was just standing up there, not preaching the word of God. And we have became so much like the world that we don't know what is the church and what is the world. We're trying to appeal to the world, but I tell you what: what do we have that can offer more than what the world can offer? What What is so important about the church? I'm going to preach next couple of weeks how the church is essential salvation and service and worship and what uh, John 3 says. But you know, uh, we uh, it's not in worldly education. Uh, we can't offer worldly education because uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 4 said we operate not in the power of demonstration, but we operate in the power of demonstration of the power of God. The greatest need of being information, God will see us educated. If we, our greatest need in this world would have been education, he would have seen us a teacher, an educator. If our greatest need had been a technology, he would have seen us a scientist. Everybody said, look at the experts. We need a scientist. We need to look at the experts. If that would have been the case, God would have seen us a scientist. It's not an athlete who wears something on their jersey, a number or a motto anymore. Bodily exercise does profit a little. But this is not entertainment. We do not appear to, uh, appeal to the flesh. We appeal to the spirit. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have seen us an entertainer, an athlete, maybe. Uh, if it had been money, if the world's greatest need had been money, God would have seen us an economist. You know, somebody to help us in our finances, in our economy, in our system. You know, we don't deal in philosophies, but this is not a for debate. This is a truth. Our greatest need was for forgiveness and to hear the Lord talk. And the only thing that we have to offer the world that can't be found out in the world is Jesus Christ. And that's why we should, that we should let this light shine and we should keep, keep telling that message. We cannot let that light go out because we have something the world don't have. One day they'll come look for it. We'll be uh, looking for that. We have something that the world does not have. You know, uh, the Bible says, oh, I like it talked about, what if God would let us uh, get some of these things from us, take some of these things away from us because we don't hold them dear. We let the light go out. But, you know, uh, Hebrews 2, 
uh, 3 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? It's not God forsaking us. It's us neglecting. And we don't have to uh, turn God away, forsake God. All we have to do is neglect God. Not hold, we can hold the word of God rare. We can, you know, not, not hardly ever preach it. Not put it on the forefront. Uh, just like in those days, the word of God was precious. It was very rare. And in their churches today, the gospel message is getting very rare. We need to keep God. We need to keep Jesus Christ at the forefront. You know, he said he'll never leave us at forsaken. You know, but we can, uh, Hebrew said, we can ignore it. We can neglect it. That means fail to care for properly. Not holding it important. Hardening of the heart, the Hebrew 3, 8. To stop having a love for him. You know, never being sure of our salvation anymore. That is one of the biggest problems in the church is they do not know that they know that they know that God has saved them, and they never go on with the Lord, refusing to hear from their, from one who speaks from heaven, a hard heart, a deaf ear. we got dry eyes, unbending knees. Uh, we are cold and indifferent. Just like Eli, we let that light go out. And we are people, though, in the house of the Lord. I mean, Eli, uh, he, he loved the Lord, but guess what he did? He neglected it through prayer, through uh, obeying God, uh, through the things that he should do. But, you know, Samuel said we need to learn how to listen to God. You know, Samuel, uh, through what he did, he shaped the Bible. He anointed the first two kings of Israel. He uh, went ahead by listening to God. God used him in a mighty way. Even in these dark days, even in these uh, dangerous times, if we would just listen to God, and uh, to l listen to his calling, God would use us. We can't let that light uh, go out anymore. Mr. Cage, we pray, we play that song one more time for us. I was, I was blind, but now I see. This is what it's all about. Passing that baton, teaching, and giving them joy. I mean, he, he asked, I didn't, I didn't have to beg him to come up here. He wanted to play this. That's what it's all about. Children should have a joy. They, they should have a joy. They, want, they should have a song in their heart. But you know what we've done through the ages? We kind of let the light grow in. How about your little light? You know, God has given us an opportunity in these dark days that our light can shine the brightest. Just like in those caves. Uh, it's so dark you can feel that darkness. But yet you have one little light in your uh, what? I never knew that was there. I mean, we got a chance. Even the smallest light will shine the brightest in these dark days. If we will obey God and listen to God. Go ahead, Mr. Kate. Okay. Amazing grace. That's a song the angels can't sing. And I bet you the angels in heaven are leaning over the windows of heaven listening to this child play. Amen. Don't you, do you still have that light shining in your heart? 
Do you still have that love for God? I'd rather hear that than anybody I ever done. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. That, that did my heart good. Appreciate you. I want to thank you for doing that. I want to appreciate your family for investing that time for getting me. I appreciate that. That is special to me. Uh, I mean, that's just something that really helped my heart. Uh, that's what it's all about. Passing that on. Uh, they might keep telling that old story. Just keep telling the story. I mean, it, I'd rather hear that. Uh, I do the angels singing in heaven, but that's a song they can't sing. Amen. They listen to that.